In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the four quantum numbers. Quantum numbers are a set of numerical values that describe the unique properties and trajectory of an electron in an atom. They provide information about the electron's energy level, the shape of its orbital, the orientation of the orbital in space, and the direction of its spin. Together, these four quantum numbers act like an address to pinpoint an electron's position and state within an atom. The four quantum numbers are principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and spin quantum number. The principal quantum number, also called N. The principal quantum number is the first of the four quantum numbers and it describes the energy level or shell of an electron in an atom. It determines the electron's average distance from the nucleus and the overall size of the orbital. The values of n can be any positive integer, so n can be equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. For its energy levels, Higher n values correspond to higher energy levels and greater distances from the nucleus. Each energy level can hold a specific number of orbitals and electrons. The maximum number of electrons can be calculated using the formula 2n squared. Then the total number of orbitals can be calculated using the formula n squared. So let's see how this actually plays out. So if n is equal to 1, the total number of orbitals will be 1 because 1 to the power of 2 is still 1. And then the total number of electrons will be 2 times 1. So that is 2 electrons. If n is equal to 2, we'll have 4 orbitals and 8 electrons. If n is equal to 3, we'll have 9 orbitals and 18 electrons. Next, the azimuthal quantum number represented as L. It is also known as the orbital angular momentum quantum number. That's a mouthful. It defines the shape of the orbital in which an electron resides. It determines the type of sublevels, that is either S, P, D, or F, within a given energy level. So the values of L can range from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the principal quantum number. Let's look at some examples. If n is equal to 1, that means L will be equal to 0. And that means we will have only an s orbital. If n is equal to 2, L will be equal to 0 or 1. So we'll have an s orbital and a p orbital. If n is equal to 3, L will be equal to 0, 1, or 2. So the orbitals will be s, p, and d. So for our previous example in previous quantum number, the orbitals will then be, so for one orbital, it will be 1s, for four orbitals, we'll have 2s and 2p, and for nine orbitals, we'll have 3s, 3p, and 3d. The L also shows us the orbital shape. So let's look at the types of orbital shapes that we have. When L is equal to zero, it's an s orbital. An s orbital has a spherical shape. When L is equal to 1, that's a p orbital, and the p orbital has a dumbbell shape. When L is equal to 2, that's a d orbital, and the d orbital has a clover leaf shape. When L is equal to 3, that's an f orbital, and an f orbital has a complex shape. The shape of an orbital affects how electrons distribute around the nucleus. Different shapes mean different probabilities of finding an electron in various regions of space. So, the azimuthal quantum number, L, determines the shape of the space where an electron is likely to be found, helping us understand the geometry of atomic orbitals. The magnetic quantum number, this specifies the orientation of an orbital in space, and it describes how the orbital is aligned relative to an external magnetic field or spatial difference. That is, it shows the number of orbitals in each sublevel. The possible values of M1 range from minus L to positive L, including zero. For a given azimuthal quantum number L, M has 
2L plus 1 possible values. For example, if L is equal to 0, M1 will be equal to 0. That means we have one orientation for an S orbital. If L is equal to 1, M1 will be equal to minus 1, 0, and plus 1. So that is three orientations for a P orbital. If L is equal to 2, M1 will be equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 2, and plus 1. So that is five orientations of a D orbital. And this tells us the specific orientation of the orbital in three-dimensional space, usually represented as X, Y, and Z axis. For example, a P orbital, which means that L is equal to 1, has three orientations, often labeled as PX, PY, and PZ. So in essence, the magnetic quantum number M1 specifies the direction in orbital points, adding more details to the electron's address within the atom. Finally, let's look at the spin quantum number MS. This describes the intrinsic angular momentum or spin of an electron within an orbital. It indicates the direction in which the electron is spinning, which generates a tiny magnetic field. The spin quantum number can only have two positive values, which is positive half, meaning spin up, or negative half, which is spin down. Two electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spins, and this follows Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons in the same atom can have identical sets of quantum numbers. These opposite spins help maximize electron repulsion in an orbital. So, the spin quantum number distinguishes the two possible states of an electron within the same orbital, and it ensures that each electron in an atom has a unique set of quantum numbers.